This is the ADN-V G14SE. It is a 2 thirds inch sensor version of the G14P2. Because of its smaller sensor, it costs almost half as much as a G14P2. So what are you giving up for half the price? Outdoors on a moonless night, the ADN-V G14SC has noticeably lower sensitivity and signal-to-noise ratio than the G14P2. However, it still easily beats more traditional digital night vision devices like the MVG30. Relative to analog intensifier tubes, the G14SC is roughly equivalent to a low-spec NNVT MVT4, while the G14P2 is roughly equivalent to an Omni 8 Gen 3 tube. Now, we are in levels of darkness equivalent to starlight filtering through light tree cover. This is basically at the limits of what the G14SE can see, while the G14P2 still produces a useful image. And relative to intensifier tubes, the G14SE starts to fall behind a high-spec 25SNR NVT4, while the G14P2 somewhat keeps pace with the Omni 8 in terms of resolvable detail. Now, let's push everything to the absolute limit. We are now in levels of darkness that you basically won't find outdoors. Here, we can clearly see that we are well past the limits of the G14SE, but surprisingly, the G14P2 can still see stuff, although it has fallen maybe slightly behind the Omni 8 PVS-14. Now, what about latency? Well, let's test it. Here, we are filming the NVG30, the G14P2, and the G14SE at 200 frames per second. Did you see that? Let's play it back frame by frame. This is the last frame with the lights still on, and this is the first frame after the LED lights are switched off. And the moment we advance to the next frame after this, 5 milliseconds later, we can already see that the G14SE and the G14P2 has already reacted to us switching off the LED lights. And on the NVG30, which is a more traditional digital night vision device, we have to wait until frame 14 or 65 milliseconds later while the unit is on its 40 frames per second mode for it to react to us turning off the lights. Now, let's talk about the sensor readout speed of the units. Sensor readout speed is equally as important as latency when it comes to tactical high-speed applications. Using a 200Hz stroboscope, we can clearly see that the G14SC and the G14P2 take just over 9 milliseconds to read out the entire sensor. Meanwhile, a more traditional digital night vision device like the MVG30 takes around 14 milliseconds. Now, a fast readout is really important when you're doing high-speed tactical stuff because a slow readout is basically what you're seeing here on the NVG30. Lots of jello effect distortion, vertical lines becoming diagonal lines, and as you accelerate and decelerate your panning motion, straight lines become curves. By comparison, the ADN VG14 series having a faster readout speed means that the jello effect and distortion is a lot better controlled. This combination of low latency and fast readout speed means that you should have no issues at all strapping the G14SE or the P2 to your head and doing run and gun high speed tactical stuff with it. Now, onto the physical differences between the G14SE and the more expensive G14P2. Other than having a smaller sensor compared to the G14P2, the G14SE's objective lens is also f1.2, whereas the one on the G14P2 is a faster f1.05. This means that the G14P2 sensor is not only larger, but the objective lens also gathers more light. Other than the sensor and the objective lens, the G14SE and the G14P2 are basically completely identical units. This means that on the front of the G14SE, like on the G14P2, you also get a battery compartment, an IR illuminator, as well as a 9-pin socket that allows you to connect your G14SE to an external ADN-V RS2 video recorder. Moving to the mid-section of the units, you have a standard JR mounting point. This allows you to use your G14SE as well as your G14P2 with standard PVS-14 JR mounting accessories. Now, moving on to the rear of the unit, the G14SE, like the G14P2, has all of the relevant controls situated over here with the interface knob. The menu system on the G14SE is exactly identical to the one on the G14P2, so watch my G14P2 video if you want to find out more. 
Also on the rear of the unit is the ocular lens or the eyepiece. The eyepiece on the G14 SE is also exactly the same as the one on the G14 P2. This means that while you are getting class-leading eye box and eye relief performance for digital night vision, it still isn't quite to the level of something like an L3 Carson PVS-14. And lastly, dynamic range. The smaller sensor on the G14 SE means that it takes a slight penalty when it comes to dynamic range. Here, using a 10.5 stop Stouffer wedge, we can see that the G14 SE has roughly half a stop less dynamic range than the G14 P2. But yeah, this is still better than what you can get on a more traditional digital night vision device like the NVG30. So, is the G14 SE worth considering? Well, at its current retail pricing, you basically cannot get a full brand new intensifier tube unit that can match its performance. But here's the awkward thing, the G14 P2 is under twice the price of the G14 SE, but it definitely offers more than twice the performance of the G14 SE as well. The G14 P2 is class leading when it comes to low light performance, while the G14 SC is just mm, around NNVT and VT4 levels. Now, how about units that are cheaper than the G14 SE? Well, at under half the price of the G14 SE, you have the NVG30 and the NVG50. But the issue with these units is, while they are half the price, they also offer less than half the performance. So, my opinion is that if you have the money, definitely go for the G14 P2. However, if your budget is a little bit tight, then consider the G14 SE. Thanks for watching.